So the chances are you've just started out learning Adobe Photoshop. And one of the things you've already learned is how to free transform your shapes and images so that you can resize them, reposition them and rotate them. But one of the things you've also noticed is that the quality of your image changes the more times you actually resize your image. But in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something that might change the way you edit your layers forever and also means you never lose the quality in your images. Okay, cool. So we're in Adobe Photoshop and as you can see, I've just got a very simple circle. It's just a rasterized circle that I've created using the selection tool. So it's not a vector and it's not a text object. And that's important because you can actually scale text objects and vectors without losing quality already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm just going to make sure it's selected and press command and J on my keyboard or control and J for windows. And this has basically made a new copy. So I can just hold and drag that to the right. So as you can see, I've got a second circle. Now the issue many of us face is when we free transform this object. So you can either do that by making sure it's selected and going to edit and then free transform. Or you can press command T or control T on your keyboard. So often what we try to do is when we're rearranging our designs, we make things smaller. We try to rotate our objects and we try to reposition them. So if I just make this nice and small for a demonstration, like so. And when we're happy with that, we just press the tick at the top. Now, as is the case with basically every design project, you always want to make changes. And for example, in the future, you might be unhappy with this and you want to make it larger once again. So you press Command and T, Control and T for Windows, back to Free Transform, and you try to scale it up. But basically, the issue you have is when I press Enter now, that's another way of doing the tick, the circle has now become pixelated. So the way we can prevent this is making sure that our layer is a smart object instead of a rasterized layer when we try to free transform it. So in order to convert our rasterized layer into a smart object, first make sure you have all of the layers selected that you want to convert. So you can actually select multiple layers. So I've just got the one at the moment, but say I had a duplicate and actually combine both of these within the same smart object. I'm not gonna do that, I only need one for now. So in order to actually convert it, we go to the layers panel, we right click on whatever layers we have selected, and then we go to convert to smart object. And as you can see, basically the first change you'll notice is that the thumbnail of the layer has changed. It's basically got the small icon in the bottom right hand corner, and that means that this layer is now a smart object. If I make a duplicate of this smart object, I can do it slightly differently this time. I can hold option on my keyboard or alt for windows until my cursor changes to this cursor. I can hold and drag my object. And as you can see, I can make a nice quick duplicate. So if I were to free transform that, command and T or control and T for windows, I can make it nice and small and I can rotate it. I can reposition it. Basically any of the things you do in a free transform function, press enter. And now let's say I am unhappy with that. I can press command and T, resize it all the way back up to its original scale, press enter. And as you can see, it's still sharp. Now, what if you actually want to go back and be able to edit the rasterized layer? Well, what you can do is open up the smart object. So to do that, just go to the layers panel, find the correct layer and double click on the smart object thumbnail. And as you can see, this will open up a new tab with your smart object. So as you can see, it's literally taking the dimensions of the layers that we had previously, and it stored this information within a smart object, which is this new tab. So for example, I could do any normal function to the smart object. I could add a text object, for example. I could rename that, press tick. I could move it, center it, etc. We can literally do anything that you can do in any other normal project in Photoshop. The important thing is that you save it. So just make sure you press Command and S. You don't have to save it as a document anywhere. It will be stored within the project that you've already created. So just press Command and S or Control and S for Windows. Then go back to your original tab, your original project. And as you can see, that's now updated the object within this project. Now obviously, one of the things you do need to be aware of is that a smart object isn't a vector object which does mean that the smart object itself does also have dimensions, which means it can be pixelated if it is scaled larger than its original dimensions. So the original dimensions are this size, which was our original layer that we used to create a smart object. So essentially you can't use a smart object to make things bigger and keep them sharper. In that case, you need to create a vector object. If you're interested in learning how you can draw simple shapes in Adobe Photoshop using the pencil, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner. 
And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate all of the support and I hope to see you in the next video.